Hi, I'm Norman Parolo from uh, Parolo Design. I'm a furniture designer maker and a uh, woodworking educator at WoodSkills. And today I'll be talking about miter jacks, or also known as miter shoot. The design has origins in Europe, notably France, and it's a precision jig to create precise joints, specifically uh, uh, miters at the end of boards. So you can either configure them in, uh, at a 45 degree angle or a 90 degree angle. And I'll be uh, demonstrating all this in subsequent clips or videos as part of this video. So I've set it up as uh, on both my end vise and my face vise. So these particular versions, I've just finished uh, cleaning them up and rest restoring them and reinforcing them and to also uh, at the same time maintaining their, uh, their patina and maintaining uh, their functionality and, and not modifying them in any way. These versions, these particular versions date from the late 1800s with origins either in the UK or, uh, or the US and I have two of them here. This one's a slightly heavier duty one with an Acme threaded screw and it consists of a fixed jaw, a movable jaw that, that holds the piece at a 45 or a 90 degree angle. The bottom part is a keel and this, uh, this is used to attach it to a uh, either a face vise or an end vise. It's, it's very simple but it's they're fairly rugged and strong. You can see it survived in this case likely 150 years both of them. So this one I've had to make slightly more modifications and add some reinforcement and replace some hardware but it uh, works well. And I'll show you some of the uh, the mods that I've done. I've, I've created some uh, some additions to be able to work with it in different orientations. There's another one. So I'll show that in more detail in all the videos. I'm just essentially introducing them here. And they can be used with either uh, a low angle plane preferably or a large wide paring chisel. And I'll, I'll show that in the, the paring chisel part of it in subsequent videos. In this, case, in this particular series of videos coming up, it's all about using them with a low angle uh, block plane and this low angle uh, miter plane. So low angle plane works well with the miter jack because it's essentially you're working with end grain. And in my case, I found that they, uh, they work exceptionally well at creating case miters. So they can both be configured on, uh, on an end vise or a face vise. And I'll show the different configurations and orientations to be able to work better with, uh, with hand planes. Uh, again, I've already discussed the large uh, miter plane that I'll be uh, demonstrating. And in subsequent videos, I'll be demonstrating angled and straight tenons. And I'll also be demonstrating using a wide paring chisel to trim the tenons. So I'll actually show how to create tenons at angles, 45 degree angles, and to trim the tenons later. So, uh, so enjoy. I'm Norm Perolo from Wood Skills, and I'd like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. So this is one of the two uh, miter jacks that I've uh, just cleaned up or restored and added some a little support at the bottom on the right. This is where uh, effectively the clamping occurs. This is an Acme threaded colored elite screw. So it's a little more rugged than the other uh, miter jack. The other one's a sort of a lighter version, smaller, shorter. But this one, as you notice this block here, and this was actually, I integrated the block into some of the metal that was part of the uh, miter jack. And this supports the, uh, the, the business end of the miter jack, you might say. So if I clamp it in this way, in the face vise, I won't be able to do much because uh, again, it's most effective on 45 degree miters on this side. <clears throat> and because it's, it's located like this, I can't really uh, work at this angle because I'll be, uh, the actual face vise uh, workbench surface obstructs the, uh, the clamping and the, uh, the, the work holding. So here's an example of a, of a board 
and I wouldn't be able to work this like this. So I've had to make some modifications for my own uh, application. And what I've done is I've, uh, again, I've added this, this block to be able to clamp it into the vise, either a, a face vise or an end vise, which I'll show later. The attachment I've made is, uh, is this, and I've created this 45 degree block. And what the block does is it, it attaches through dowels, so it's precisely uh, fit, and it attaches to the, uh, the end block. So the end block would clamp into the uh, face vise, and I bring it out here. This this arrangement allows me to to uh, to create miters with the uh, the face of the uh, the miter jack uh, horizontal, so it's much easier to work with the plane. And I also, uh, because it's on the end of the workbench, I can extend work pieces down maybe four or five feet, a length I would never use. It's more typically for uh, creating case miters for small miters, for small boxes and uh, furniture components, dovetail drawers and that. So one of the issues with uh, face vices is, uh, is the racking and I've also uh, created this custom uh, plug or insert on the other end of the face vice, which is exactly the same width as this block. So this effectively removes uh, any uh, issues with racking. So I'll clamp that in now and I'll set this up. And I've also uh, Sorry, I'll move this over. I've also created this little block to support one end. So I'll just slide that in and that's actually just enough support to raise it. So it provides additional support. So it's all for this, this, uh, this one uh, miter jack. It's also known as a, a shoot miter and a different name. And I'm not gonna get into the origins of it because I'm not quite clear on its history, but this is probably a, an English or an early American version from the late 1800s. So I'll clamp this down to where I can uh, extend some boards out. So what this does is it provides, uh, this block provides the support for this end while I'm hand playing. And I typically hand plane in this direction. I'm left handed too, so that makes a difference in my work. And uh, I hand plane in this direction and I'll, uh, I'll give an example of a case miter uh, the miter jack really excel. I find it really excels at case miters, which are almost very difficult to create. Small case miters on any, even a, sh a shooting board, uh, you need the attachment, and it's very difficult, especially when, when you've got a wider board. And this is only uh, maybe three and a half inches, but if for five or six inches width, it's almost impossible on a on a shooting board. So this is where the, uh, the miter jack excels. So I'll just back this off and I'll. I'll set it up and I'll give an example of uh, cleaning up a miter. So I've tightened it so it's just proud, possibly a sixteenth of an inch above. And I could, I could very well create the whole miter, I guess. And this end, which is, so I bring this up, tighten it. Okay, so it's all set. You need to use a low angle uh, block type plane for this uh, miter jack. It's most effective with the low angle because it's end grain. For the most part, it's always end grain. You're, uh, you're, uh, you're shooting or you're, you're creating miters. So I'll go ahead and uh, I just actually just honed this, uh, the iron on this, uh, the blade on this low angle block plane. So I'll just go ahead and create a, a miter from a square end. So the premise is to run. I set the uh, blade a little light for light cuts, so this could take time. So you probably want to create a rough miter first, if you can, if not. When it's this high, when, when you're working from a flat point of view, a flat end, a square end, you need to, uh, so it's not really being supported on either end, so you just sort of balance the plane until the miter starts to establish itself, and then you can actually just uh, lower one side of the uh, block plane so it rests on the surface and creates a sort of a bearing surface for the, uh, we're almost there. We can see the miter being formed. And I found that the miters are exceptionally uh, accurate 
45 degrees. Now what I do normally is just so I don't get any blowout at the other end, I approach it from this end. I sort of create a small chamfer at the other end. You need to be very judicious and, uh, and then patient when you're working with these instruments, I find. well with this uh, miter check. So I'm showing you uh, probably the smallest version of plane I use. Just, uh... When you're down to this level, this is where you really want to take lighter cuts. And I find when you're doing, uh, creating uh, 45s on, uh, on the ends of boards, a larger uh, block plane with a larger, more mass really works better. So I'll use the uh, larger miter plane, one of a kind of miter plane. In a bit. People always ask, aren't you going to uh, damage the surfaces of the blocks? If you're careful, it should rarely happen, but I find it does happen, so. We're almost there. Ideally, you just want it to be just slightly proud of the surface of the uh, miter jack. Because it's still 45 degree miter. It's just... Well, there's definitely a technique on using this correctly, and I've been experimenting for days now on how to do it correctly, so I think we're okay now. So if I pull this off, you can see the cuts. Uh, it's a beautiful 45 degree angle, and if I, uh, here's on one I did earlier. That's where this appliance or bench accessory really excels. And this type of, uh, I find, other, other types of uh, face miters, for example, I can do on a shooting board, but the case miters for small boxes is where it excels. So I'll put this down, and I'll give another example of uh, the same operation with, uh, with a large miter plane, an iron miter. So this is an iron miter. It's a it's a Lee Valley Veritas product. It's, it's been since discontinued, so I probably I managed to snag one of the uh, later versions of it. And this was uh, it was only offered for a year or two. And what it is is uh, it's a essentially a supersized block plane. And there's a block plane in comparison. It's definitely a set to low angle, and uh, it works really well in conjunction with these uh, miter jacks because of the. Uh, the extra mass, it's much easier to move across. So I'm recreating the miter now again. Thick, so I'll just back this off. Oh, no, no. It 
Now you notice I'm going in one direction and then the other, both the block plane and the miter plane. And sometimes there is a little bit of grain orientation even in the ends of uh, boards and the plane seems to work better in one direction. And that's what I'm doing. It's, for some reason this direction works better. So, so again I have the, uh, the plane on the, using the uh, miter jack as a bearing surface. typical setup I have and the faces, the 45 degree faces are uh, oriented horizontally and this is the best uh, configuration for, uh, for trimming uh, case miters to uh, 45 degrees. And I'll show another example of trimming the end miters on the opposing face, the 90 degree face. I just tested it on the other end of the bench. These uh, miter jacks are uh, configured for either left-handed or right-handed operation. And I can't remember if this is left-handed or right-handed, but because I have an end vise and a face vise, I can uh, configure it differently uh, along with that mounting block I've uh, created. So I'll take it apart now and I'll show you an example of, uh, of using the, the 90 degree face clamped in a different uh, end vise. So that would be the, uh, the case miter at 45 degrees and it's a perfect 45 degrees all along its, uh, its width. And I just trimmed the other end that I just uh, set up at 45 to back to 90. On the, uh, I just tested it in that configuration and I'll show that next. So I'll take this apart and I'll show you how that works. So all this uh, comes apart. <coughs> Some small improvement I had to do with that end to reinforce it. And the, uh, this is the mounting block again. Stabilizes it at 45 degrees with its 45 faces uh, oriented horizontally. Without that, I can just clamp it in, uh, clamp it in the vise, and I'll actually be doing that at the other end. So I'll show that. So this is the same miter jack oriented with its 90 degree faces, and it's clamped into my uh, twin screw end vise. Now, uh, because it's a twin screw end vise and it's chain driven, I don't have any issues with racking, but I could uh, easily use that same block I used. And actually, well, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I will set it up with that block. Because the block is the block's width is identical to this width, so I'll do that. I'll just release this. Like again, this isn't really necessary because it's a twin screw vise and it's designed to avoid to avoid any racking. So, so I just uh, when I do locate it on the workbench surface, I have it a little higher than the workbench surface. That's pretty stable. What I'll do is I'll use this same uh, piece I've been using and I'll... Uh... So I could either use the smaller block plane or the uh, larger iron miter. And assuming this is a uh, side of a box, uh, I don't have much clearance here so I'll have to use this plane. So when I'm doing something like this, I normally don't have it this proud because I've probably got a rough surface there and I just have to locate it just a little bit above the uh, surface of the, uh, the miter jack faces. And that saves considerable time. And... Right. 
Once the, uh, the block plane or whatever plane you're using is uh, pretty close to the surface, you can have it right on one of the edges and then it just everything goes so much better. Except for a very fine cut. Not too fine, but just it's a balance. I think we're almost there. I actually trim it right down to the level. I trim it just a little higher. One thing I forgot to mention is I skew my my planes to reduce the uh, angle of attack. It's interesting how it always works better in one direction than the other. So there is some uh, some grain orientation even in that grain. I think we're done. So if I remove this, that's a perfect uh, It's a perfect 90 degrees. On both, on both the face and on the, the edge. So this is how it's done with uh, hand tools. It was done a century and a half ago. I think these date from the late 1800s, if I'm not mistaken. So I'll just uh, release this. So I'll give them good examples of uh, demonstrations of how to use this one. I'll, I'll set up my uh, smaller one. Show some of the versatility I have because of its uh, it's a symmetric twin screw vise. I can also set it up for that horizontal orientation of the 45 degree blocks using that same using that same 45 degree setup with the uh, so this allows me. Because of its orientation, I can extend boards down. So if this were a four, five foot board, maybe four foot board, I could extend it down and work it on this side. So it depends on your hand orientation, where you'd want it. I, I'm left-handed, so I prefer it the other end. It's easily workable if you're right-handed on this side too. So I'll just, uh, I'll just tighten that up. And it's just as solid now as, uh, as it was at the other end. So it's pretty solid and that's, that's another orientation. So it's very flexible. Uh, there is some thought that needs to go into developing these, uh, these mounting blocks and offset blocks to, uh, to, to make sure that it's, uh, it's versatile that way. So I could easily uh, have trim this end again. Pay attention to the, uh, the shavings you're creating and when and understanding when to stop. <laughs> because you don't necessarily have to go down to the, the level of the, uh, the blocks of the uh, miter jack. So that's a perfect 45. So we trimmed that down to a perfect 45. So this is another orientation and now we'll get back to that second one, that smaller one now. So 
this is my this is my second uh, miter jack. It's a little uh, smaller, lighter, and it doesn't have an Acme screw, but it, it seems to work better. It has brass fittings and metal fittings that are cleaned up and everything, lubricated and uh, it's restored somewhat. I had to replace some screws. I haven't really touched much else aside from uh, these little mounting blocks. This is original. Again, I can mount this at the end of my twin screw vise and uh, orient it so the faces, the 45 degree faces are horizontal. In order to do that, again, I've had to create its own custom uh, mounting block. This is also a plug-in block. Yes, I've got it right. So that plugs in, it's a cherry block and it uh, plugs in through some dowels. So that, that stabilizes it when it's in this orientation with the 45 uh, horizontal. Clamp that down with the uh, spacer block at the other end. It's important to uh, orient these correctly because when it's set when it's set for horizontally like this, you need you need the room to be able to maneuver the uh, the pieces. So I had a 45 degree end that this uh, is already created, so I'll recreate one at this end now. So I'll make sure everything's tight. <laughs> so I can do it with the block plane. I can start with the block plane. I'm left-handed, so my orientations are a little different from, from most people, from most, most right-handed people. And I can set this up at both this end and with the twin screw vise on this particular bench. I have two of these. Or the uh, subtle, so it works with the face wipe. And, uh, yeah, always happens. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually chamfering the uh, yeah, so it doesn't blow out. What I'm doing also is I'm actually recreating the uh, the bevel, the case bevel, completely from a square end. But maybe you don't need to do that. You can re you can create a rough uh, 45 degree angle in this. It'll save time and hand plane. And just use this to, uh, to set it up correctly at 45 along its width. I use a, both a combination of skew and a circular motion with. Uh, with the plane. These shavings are, uh, they look fine, but they're a little thick for my taste. I'm using the uh, the iron miter. <laughs> I like that it. it's got quite the mass. A little, I think, a five and a half pounds. So you have to be very careful and judicious when you're uh, working with this, because the ideal situation is to actually have the uh, the bevel raised a little from the faces.
think I'll stop there. Show you what I've done in progress. Now that's the uh, 45. So it's a perfect 45 along its length. That's the important thing. Now I can also set this uh, for the opposing 90 degree face and I'll show that now. That's the, uh, the block I've created so it's customized for this particular miter chop. So I could, I could set it up this way. I could set it up this way. So if I need, if I need to, uh, not miter, but do the, uh, uh, the two miter ends. I've got this smaller piece just to give a demonstration of. orientation as much as the 45 degree because that's where it excels. So this is. And I'll give another demonstration at the other end in a face vise. So I've gone ahead and uh, set up the uh, smaller of the two uh, miter jacks uh, at the end of a uh, face vise with that spacer block I created. It's exactly that thickness. So I made sure everything's uniform with, uh, with that thickness. Now most people just have a, a face vise, so this is an example of how to use it with a face vise only. The twin screw chain driven vise is uh, not usually available on most workbenches, although it would work with a simple tail vise. So it's very rugged and uh, the spacer blocks that I've put in seem to work well. And uh, just to rough cut this uh, the bad saw, so it's very rough cut and it's not exactly at 90 degrees in both planes. I'll use, I'll try to work that. Now what? Use this guy, it's large. So it's 90 in both planes. 
And that's as far as I go. It's a smooth surface and it's oriented correctly. What I'll do next is set it up for the, uh, the 45 degree face. Now we're back to the end vise. It actually works a little better here in that um, this orientation with the 45 degree face is uh, horizontal. So I will be using, I'll set it up here and I've got the uh, spacer block at the other end. So I'll set that up here and again we have that issue. So unless so I develop this, uh, this block, the plug-in block for that to set to stabilize it at 45 degrees. Clamps in. Leave some clearance at the end here so I can extend the longer boards up. And this clamp's closed and stable. And this is the smaller of the two miter jacks. It doesn't have the acne screw, but it actually works. It's a lot smoother for some strange reason. It's a little proud, so, so assuming this is uh, not square, I mean not, not a 45, not beveled, and I'll just work that. Use this guy. It's a very fine instrument, this large uh, miter for its size, five and a half pounds. It has a, uh, an adjustable mouth too. It's just much, very much like a, a small block plane. This is a situation where the uh, more mass in the flame works a little better. <laughs> of the actual bevel and I know it's uh, uniform across its, uh, its depth and then also the width of the board. I think that'll do it. So I'll release that. Have a look. Perfect 45 along its, its width, and that's what we're striving for. So these are uh, these would be uh, this would be a part of a, a box or a large drawer. This miter jack allows me to create this. It's a little more difficult on a shooting board. You need uh, fixtures on the, on the shooting board to be able to create this type of miter. And I do have something like that, but as the wider it gets, the more difficult it is, and this locks it in and it has two faces. It's almost foolproof to be able to use this to do that operation. So that's uh, how that works. It's very solid. So again, there's some versatility in this. You need to adapt these and they're very hard to find. And uh, I'll talk about that in my conclusion. So I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the videos and you're more enlightened to how a miter jack or uh, also known as a miter shoot is used and its uh, features and advantages. So it takes some time to become familiarized with a miter jack and its nuances, i found. But the skills and techniques uh, will become second nature after a while. So I've been using this for a number of days now and trying to understand how to use them better. And uh, I'm becoming considerably more comfortable with uh, using them now. And after all, it's a fine instrument and it needs to be treated as such. In the next videos, I'll be uh, featuring uh, tenon work, uh, creating tenons, tuning them with uh, both uh, hand planes and the specialized planes, and chisels, wide pairing chisels, all using the uh, miter jack. So I'll be creating the tenon and fine tuning the tenon using the miter jack exclusively. So subscribe to my, uh, my channel for more videos on the miter jack and other woodworking techniques that I developed, and visit woodskills.com 
for my courses, my online woodworking courses, my books. I have a series of books available and uh, plans. And uh, I also have a feature, a blog that I update periodically on, uh, on what I've got going on. Thank you for watching and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this.